So something killed that deer but didn't bother to eat it. Maybe I found something tastier further down. I guess let's find out. I don't see anything in here. Do you, do you hear that? Murmurin, do you hear that? I heard something. It didn't sound friendly necessarily. Oh, it's this bear. Your choice. We didn't give him much of a choice. What if trolls weren't trying to slap you, but shake your hand? Beasts are so misunderstood. Why are you interrupting? Hold on. Oh, god damn it. Oh. Ma'am, why are you singing while there's still enemies in here? Why are you singing while we're still getting attacked down here? Was she just wielding a bow too while singing? I don't Hold think up. We'll be hearing the bard sing about and this so battle. the pack was born again. I think it's safe in here now. Area clear, room in area clear. In life and sudden death as the moonlight found out. I see you left some enemies for us. Ah, oh, greetings, fellow traveler. I apologize for my singing. I didn't realize I had an audience. I sometimes fashion myself a bard or a sword singer of legend. <laughs> well, you did have an audience. There were some saber cats, a bear. You did kill the wolves, though. Your Viscar is the Hall of the Companions. Why, well, thank you. I'm so glad we're just meeting her and just spitting facts at her. We're just like, hey, here's some knowledge for you. That's a beautiful song. It's more ominous than beautiful. But I suppose its melody won't lack for suitors. Maybe not now, but in time. The melody you sung, it's not as common as some of the other local favorites. Are you an adventurer of some sort? Hardly. In my time with the wolves, I did a lot of small favors. Pest control, muscle jobs, or hunting down petty thieves. I remember As those days. Who spent half her life in the slums and the other half tracking and hunting forest game, this work came easy. Unfortunately, raiding caves, Dralgo crypts, ghost ships, and spider dens are another matter entirely. You seem like you can handle yourself in a fight. True, but there are a certain type of skill set you need to survive as an adventurer. You need to know which mushrooms are food and which ones are poison. And which ones get you high? You have to learn how to sleep on a bed of rock and with one eye open. And, as a hunter, you have to get used to the idea of being prey. The worst part is, you might spend a week in some crypt and have no treasure to show for it. So you also have to learn to handle disappointment. A week? Yet it's not the size of a cave that worries me, but what lives inside it. Particularly the caves marked by the Falmer. What marking do you speak of? The former mark the entrance to their caves with a sculpture of painted bones. I'm repulsed by it. But I don't think I could venture into a cave if I wasn't sure those things weren't looming beneath. The markings help. Why do you feel the former? I mean, for a lot of good reasons, but, you know, just curious. I grew up in a poor village outside of Whiterun. It was very small, but full of children and as such, full of life. They said when we played in the yard, the peals of laughter rang all the way to Dragon's Reach. Yet, when I think about that village, I can never hear it. I listen for it train my ears toward the darkness. But what comes out isn't laughter. 
There were screams that night. So many screams. The Falmer took my mother. They took my father. They tried to take me. How did you escape the Falmer attack? Before she took me in, my mother used to light a single sconce by my bed to ward off the dark. I remember the way the light wrapped around its face. How it stood there, tracing its mouth with its tongue. I... I'm sorry. No more talk about the Falmer. They're foul creatures, and if I never see another, it will be too soon. Did you find anything of interest here? Nothing. Just the usual trinket surrounded by corpses, blood and bones. The bandit corpse over there is still fresh. Looks like I arrived here before the wolves could desecrate it. The face on that one looked familiar. I almost thought it was someone I knew. A friend's cousin's uncle or something. What does that make us? Strangers. But even the death of a stranger seems like something worth mourning. There'd be a lot of mourning then. While you mourn the death of one bandit, his friend will stab you in the back. I agree. While I believe that every dead man deserves to be mourned, I don't believe I'm the one who should mourn them. Okay, there you go. See, I like that. You sound like you almost resent companion work, and as the head of the companions, I resent that. Resent is probably too... strong of a word. My time with the wolves was disappointing, but only because I had a false impression of who they were. And what did you think the companions could do for you? As a child, I thought they could protect me. As a woman, I thought they would groom me. It was naive to think so. Wolves may run in packs, but there's a hierarchy, and a competitive one. Whatever skill or strength I gained, I earned on my own. That melody you sung, it's not as common as some of the other local favorites. No, I imagine it isn't. Few have ever heard it, and even fewer understand what it's about. Some say it's a quiet song of glory, while others will tell you it tells the loudest of tragedies. You see, to be a companion, to be part of the circle, one must give up a piece of their humanity. It was not something I was willing to give. So I left my shield brothers and sisters and set out on my own. I figured I needed the time to myself and I've grown weary of saying goodbye. I agree, there's only one thing worth giving up your humanity for. I know it must have been difficult, I myself was asked to make that choice. I made the choice and then I reversed it, because, you know, <laughs> that's just how it goes sometimes. Not at all. The choice was easy. I've always been suspicious of easy power. The only strength that you can truly rely on is the kind that's earned. Have you ever thought of returning to the Companions? No. And it has nothing to do with the Circle. That's why I left, but there's a different reason why I won't return. And what is that reason? When I was a child, I thought of nothing else but joining the fabled Companions. Not out of some desire to be a hero. Did I ever because tell you I, I have a fear there of animals? No safer place That's to right. live than inside the great meat hall of Yavaska. So Morval hasn't turned into a bubbling I remember system. kneeling on yes. the steps, drenched in wet rags, the clouds practically screaming the rain. I must have looked so pitiful, begging Skior to take me in. Yet it wasn't pity he gave me, but scorn. Who do you think we are, girl? He said. Yavaska is not an orphanage. And he was right. All my life I'd sought the protection of others, when I should have been learning to protect myself. We all need to rely on others. Surely you have not come this far without help? True. There are many times when I have relied on the strength of others, and each time it has only served to hinder my own development. I once travelled with a companion. You might even call him a friend. For years, I would rely on him for food, for warmth, and for someone to talk to. But what if the day came when I couldn't summon his aid, 
And then what would become of me? No, that wasn't going to be my fate. How did you eventually become a companion? The wolves will recruit any fighter who is strong and virtuous, for there are few in this world who are both. My chance came about seven summers ago, when the city held a tournament to celebrate the birth of the Jarl's son. Ah, uh, which one, the creepy one? I was a girl not even flowered, and the crowd behind me laughed and jeered when I requested to enter my name on the archers list. But all went silent when Yule and Greymane vouched for me. Oh. And paid for my entrance with a dagger from the Skyforge. Oh, I miss Yurland. Oh, I like Yurland. Yurland's always been a good dude. Why do you think Yurland vouched for you? From his view atop the Skyforge, he'd seen me grow from a child who could barely knock an arrow to one who could bullseye a flea. He watched me train outside Javaska day and night in the chills of winter and the rains of spring so that I could one day earn my way inside. And on that day, there was not an archer in Whiterun whose aim was more true. Not Aethys or Irileth, not even Aela the Huntress would best me. Hey, this if you asked that elf to shoot the ground, he'd still miss. Yes, and I imagine he'd accidentally hit your foot. Yeah, he's pretty useless. All right. I'm not gonna tell her to pay her respects. We already talked about mourning and everything. It was nice to meet you. Well, this is the really nice thing about speaking with the innkeepers and everything, because the innkeepers give you all these different rumors. They help you kind of find the people from the mod, which really, really like that. Really a fan of that personally. Oh, Jesus. All right. That is some kick I've got. Oh, wait a second! Oh, look, it's the journal. It is the journal of Lathquin Evanhart. Oh, from the Radiant Dark. Oh, didn't expect to see that one here. Oh, man. And I probably wouldn't have seen it if it wasn't for my incredible superpower kick that I did to that rib cage. That just made me stop dead in my tracks and go like, oh, hold on a second. Let's, uh, let's, let's leave. Let's get out of here. Let's go to an inn. Let's leave her to her singing. Let's not get in the way of that. Ready to get moving? Where do you think we should go next? So, it's Rumarin's turn to make a decision. Bold move on your part, seeing as I'm half a half-wit. I'm the other half of Just that. Just remember to point the finger elsewhere when things go wrong. Otherwise, I'm likely to pull it and make some sort of crude noise. <laughs> uh, duly noted. So did you have any thoughts on where to go? Well, now that you mention it, I was in Riverwood listening to this half-wit tell me about the story behind the Sleeping Giant Inn. Naturally, as he was twice as smart as I am, I was intrigued. Supposedly, there's an actual sleeping giant living somewhere in Falkreath. Giants go to sleep just like the rest of us. How is this any different? They say a hagraven cast a spell on it long ago, and it only wakes when an adventurer comes to plunder the treasure it guards. Now, the person I spoke with said he already slew the giant, but later on I realized he was making the whole thing up the slain part. The giant and the treasure may very well exist. In other words, this could be a complete waste of time. Sleeping or not, slaying a giant doesn't sound too difficult. Well, how do you propose we get past the giant? I am glad you asked. It means we think on the same level, as that is precisely what I asked our half-wit friend. Supposedly, the sleep spell has a weakness, which allows the Hagraven to access her treasure. According to him, all we need to do is play it a lullaby and we'll be able to rock the angry giant back to sleep. Then we have to find ourselves a bard. Well, yes, but to be honest, I would rather not stake my life on the words of this halfwit, regardless of how smart he seems standing next to me. <laughs> I was thinking we should also recruit a strong warrior, in the event the giant refuses to take its nap. 
I have some friends in Morthal who told me there's some legendary hero who lives in the marsh and rides a Taurus. If we can recruit him and the Bard, I'd feel a lot more comfortable about our chances. Alright, I'm in. Listen, you talk about riding Chorus, there was a whole thing a little while ago where someone drew some Chorus porn. You laugh. You're laughing right now, My aren't you? My invisible magic sword is yours. But it was real, and it was honestly terrifying. The Elder Scrolls community is both great and cursed at times. But hey, I guess that's true what they say about Rule 34. If it exists, there is porn of it, even when there shouldn't be. So off to Morthal we go. Finally, someone comes in. Kick off your boots, stay a while. Let me know if there's anything I can help you with. I got nothing but time these days. We need your assistance with the giant. Ah, so you seek the axe of the one they call Giant Bane. Yes, Jonas. My legend is as vast as the Sea of Ghosts. And yet I could fill it to the brim with the bones of the giants I have slain. I have, uh, never heard of you before, so I am sure that you're very, very talented. No way you could be misrepresenting yourself at all. And what makes you such a prolific giant slayer? Uh, why would there be giant bones in the ocean? I don't know. Uh, probably because they ran in fear of my axe when I killed their furry cows and slaughtered their young. You know, I've never seen their young. From that day on, they have painted the stones with my name. Fear the one called Jonas, for he is the giant's bane. That's enough, Jonas. Stop confusing the other patrons with your lies. Ooh! They are not lies, wench. Ooh! I am the giant's bane. I like you. Just because you were born with that stupid name, don't make it so. Sometimes I wonder if you didn't make up that, too. Ooh! Wait, I heard there was a legendary knight living in this town. Sorry, handsome, but it ain't Jonas. This poor ass drinker couldn't slay a flea. You want that Argonian? The one that lives up north in the swamp? <gasps> oh! I really like the looks of this Jonas oh. fellow, but the wench doesn't seem too impressed. And I trust my wenches. I guess it's off to the marsh then. Oh! Adam Law! Oh, the Swamp Knight! Reunited! And it feels so goddamn good. You want that Argonian up in the swamp? There's only one. Or, you know, there could be more than one. But frankly, as far as I'm concerned, you've been a good friend to me. There's that only one. Something. Oh, I'm excited. So, we raid a simple Nord ruin, and it's crawling with Draugr. Total coincidence, I'm sure. That's how it always goes. We need your assistance with the giant. Ha ha ha! You sure you two haven't been sniffing death bowels? What could you possibly have to gain from slaying a giant? Besides a cracked skull and a handful of toes. What about the cheese? Who doesn't like cheese? Mammoth cheese, specifically. Right, Traveler. There's toes, cheese, and a pile of swords from all the fools who came before us. Ha ha ha! But why not? You've caught me on a good day. Alright, I'll help you slay this giant. Wait, so you're the Argonian who braves the marsh? I was expecting someone... burlier. Oh no, rumor and no! <laughs> Don't worry, elf. Wait, where's that I'm guard going? stronger than I look, and I tend to draw attention. This giant will definitely kill you last. <laughs> <laughs> that's comforting to know. Oh, I love All it. Right, that's one down and one to go. We need a bard, you said. Yes? Uh, as for the bard, do you want to go to the College in Solitude? That would probably be a bad idea. We want someone who can handle themselves in a fight. If I had a conscience, and I'm beginning to suspect I might, it would weigh heavily on it if I got some poor lootist killed. Mm. 
If this bard were a warrior, well, then I wouldn't mind so much if their bodies ended up halfway up the ceiling. Hazards of the job and all that. I wonder if any of the companions know how to sing. We should stop by your Vasca, find out before we go asking your bard if he can swing a mace. Alright. Alright then. Well, it's good to have you back, Animla. Welcome to our little ragtag group of adventurers. Welcome, we're the most ragtag group you've ever seen. We're heading out. The scales are itching for a fight. It's that or a bad case of rust janker. <laughs> you guys are gonna you guys are gonna get along great. I can feel it. Are you sure you don't How have some help buyer's you? remorse? I mean, Anumla is great, but did you see the size of that Jonas fellow? Oh. I can hear you, you know. I mean, seriously, those muscles were bigger than her entire head. All three of our heads put together. I'm sure if this treasure was guarded by a pile of firewood, those muscles would come in real handy. Okay, maybe he is a milk drinker, but what if he's not? All I'm saying is we just put him in front of a giant and see what happens. Ha ha ha! Now that's something we'd both like to see. <coughs> looking for my husband, Nazim? No one. Check the Jarl's backside. No one is ever looking for Nazim. I got news for you, lady. As important as he thinks he is, he's not. Dude doesn't even own a home. Dude doesn't even have a house. He sleeps at the drunken huntsman. He might be drunken, but I can guarantee he is no huntsman. So, is it true what they say, that you ride an armored Chorus? Please tell me it's true. Oh, I forgot about that! Riding a Chorus is just like riding a horse. All you need is a saddle, and a strong resistance to poison. Now, some people will tell you, you have to be crazy to ride one. Well, you don't have to be, but it certainly helps. Wait, so I need a saddle and... Oh, you're being sarcastic. You know, I don't like it so much when other people do it to me. Yeah, same. Same. I see you, uh, switched armors. Ah, there you are. Her arrow disappeared. For some reason, I had a feeling I'd run into you here. Is it because I'm the harbinger of the companions? I thought you didn't want to come back to this place. I didn't come back to join. I came back to return something. You see, all my life I've worn heavy armor. It just felt more comfortable, safe. But after we spoke, I started to wonder. Maybe it was just another crutch. I don't need Jolan's armor to protect me. All I need is my own strength. You're still wearing heavy armor. As I've told you before, we all have weaknesses. The others fill in the gaps. That is where you and I differ, friend. I train every day to rid myself of weakness, or at the very least so I can mask them with my strength. In any case, I'm sure you didn't come here to listen to me argue over nothing. What business do you have here in Whiterun? I'm just going to... <laughs> uh, hold on. What Much is it? better. We need a bard to soothe the heart of a giant. A giant? I'm afraid that sounds like a job for the companions, and I'm no longer that. Nor do I consider myself a bard, so it seems you've come up short on both counts. Well, it's either you or Ayla, and chances are she sings like a cow. It's not about belonging to any faction. You can sing, and you can fight. You have the heart, and you have the vocal cords. I confess I have a love for strings, whether they be on bows or lutes. Yet I doubt my arrows can fell a giant, nor can my song appease one. Alright, maybe I should explain. You see, there was- Ready to get moving! And she had a treasure. To guard it, she cast a spell on a giant, so it wakes up when someone draws near. But if the witch herself wanted access to the treasure- What is it? Put it back to you look like you have something on your mind. You left out the most- Don't worry. Details. It'll pass. Do you know what song is the key to this spell? I imagine it won't do us any good to sing something like Mogo's Mead. As a matter of fact, I've met a giant before. Well, a puny one, but a giant nonetheless. 
He seemed to like it when Carita stopped singing and played those soft instrumentals. Although, it could have been all the mead he was drinking. In other words, you have no idea what song I need to play? Not a clue. I'll go get my loot. Okay, we have our bard and our giant slayer. All that's left to do now is find our giant. Apparently, a lot of hunters like to frequent this cave, and there's even a small lake toward the rear, but no one ever drinks from it. Probably because it tastes like century-old giant broth. Oh. Ah, uh, are you saying this giant sleeps underwater? So they say. Problem is, half the hunters who go into that cave end up dead, and the other half see nothing at all. Of course, the dead ones are proof enough. Also, the footprints those bodies are lying in. I'm hoping bringing the others will help us avoid that scenario, or at least give us ample time to run away. They can hear you, you know. So are we heading out? Or do you need me to pick up an instrument, too? I don't see how it could hurt. Maybe I should sing as well. No, 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 no. Um, I think it's best if I play alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I forgot to mention one other part. The song will put him to sleep, but he won't stay that way. Not unless we add a little something extra to his blood. Like, say, via a sword coated in sleeping tree sap? And by we, I take it, you mean me. Or me. Well, I would do it myself, but I use bound weapons, and I'm not 100% sure it would work. And before you ask, don't worry, I'm not a total idiot. <laughs> the first thing I did was secure a bottle from one of the local traders. Oh, I love him. Just don't ask from whom. Although, if you want a hint, it rhymes with Ebolda. Fine with me. Magic spells I don't really get, but sticking a sword in someone's belly makes sense to me. Okay, then let's go. If that's okay with you, being the leader and everything. I'll allow it. I'm ready. I'm good. Yes? Oh! Is that for another quest with him? Or is it for this one? Okay, it's for a separate quest. Uh, I'll meet the three of you outside of Moss Mother Cavern. That's fine. Yeah, I guess I already have his quest unlocked then, or another quest for him unlocked. Ooh, damn. Oh, there are certain characters that are marked as... So, Fiona, is it true that you're like, so super cool? followers, and he is one of them. He was a lot like wow, that's amazing. He sang, I told myself how to shuffle note, the deck of cards made you feel his pain. Oh, he's dead. I've always felt like I understood Argonian ballads. Not just their sadness, but their strength. In a lot of ways, a good song is like good company. I love this group. I can't relate. I've always preferred being on my own. Maybe not you as much, Fiona. So did Bodan at first. But that didn't stop us from doing everything we could to change his mind. They are talking over each other, though, a little bit. Oh, this is great. We have a fellowship. The Fellowship of the Giant. That is what they'll call us. Alright, we're here. If the legend is true, then this giant should be waking up as soon as I began this sentence five seconds ago. Wait, where's Fiona? We'll need to clear a space for me to play. The last thing I need is a critique from an angry bear. Oh, right, right behind him. Just leave that to me and the Traveler. We might even put this giant to sleep the old-fashioned way. You guys ready? Yes. Oh, should I say follow me to him, or All are they right, going to follow regardless? Lead on, brave traveler. Lead on. I'm right behind you. Uh, I'm going to tell him to follow just in case. Oh, it's not letting me click it. No, there we go. you already have someone. I don't want to be a third wheel. Okay, never mind. So they're right, then. following me already. Oh, I think Anim Law's following me is why. Yep, she is. Okay. I'm right behind you. Oh, I know. Watch out, everyone. We got Spriggins. 
Victory is ours. I've always wanted to say that. Well, stick with me, Rumorin, and we'll get there. Always waxed poetic about his homeland, but he didn't do Skyrim justice. Probably because Arnwolf was a terrible speaker. <laughs> hey, I got that in common with them. Oh, there he is. By the nine, it's enormous. It's a regular giant giant. <laughs> and here, I thought I wasn't going to have any fun. Where should I stick this giant? Well, hold on. Fiona has to coax her to sleep first. I know when I get out of bed, the first thing I want to do is hop back in. All right. Wish me luck. She's going to get murdered, isn't she? Oh, she's stuck on the barrels. That might not be good. Well, that I could be a problem. I want to ask, but is it working? I don't know. He looks sort of sleepy, but it's hard to tell. Maybe I ought to get a closer oh, look. Oh, 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 and there she goes. Call me crazy. I think the music is making him angrier. Oh, no, that's not good. Why would... Oh, God. Oh, yep, yeah. nope, we, we made him angrier. We absolutely made him angrier. Fiona, okay, good. She took out her bow. Oh, he's a little bit stronger than I expected. Oh, do not hurt Anamla! Do not hurt her! All over now. Good Is it dead? Or just sleeping? No, he's dead. Well, I plunged my sword into it enough times where it could be either. Am I the only one who's curious about the treasure? Someone should jump into that lake. Hey, don't look at me! And risk that giant waking up and biting my head off. He's dead! Besides, that water looks cold. He's dead. Alright, fine. You guys wait here. Do not leave me. Oh, no. Don't tell me the treasure is this person. Elandriel's ring. Can swim underwater. Without drowning. That's the treasure. <laughs> Look at that irony right there. What is it? Did you find anything? Are we filthy rich or just filthy? Well, I'm a little cleaner because I jumped in the water. <laughs> oh. The joke's on us. There's no treasure save this ring. Still, I had fun. A ring? Oh, hold on. Is that what I think it is? A sapphire ring that lets you breathe underwater? Oh no, we've made a horrible mistake. <sighs> it has been a long time since my branches have seen the sun. What? By the hist, were you sleeping in that lake? Is she the witch? I was, but worry for me not. In the land of dreams, time. Is but a moment until you awake. Yet, now that I am once more among the waking, I must fulfill my end of the tale. For I am bound to love the hero who vanquished the sleeping giant and rescued me from the clutches of eternity. Rumorand, you're up, dude. Oh no, here it comes. You're up. To which of you four am I wed? Step forward, hero. And we shall live in matrimony. Bush. It was him. He hey, 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 hey. I see. Then you are my love, wed by the divines. Here. Don't look at me like that. Don't look. Nature. Don't look at me like that, rumor. I hate to say it, traveler, but the honorable don't lie. It was definitely you. No, it was rumorin. So, my spouse, shall we reside here? Or is there another cave that we will call home? Oh, I'm afraid my heart belongs to another. I think we should get to know each other first. <laughs> I, I'm afraid my heart belongs to another. Who? I don't know. Anyone but you, Lady of the Lake. That is unfortunate. 
Is it one of these three? Nope. Or another? Perhaps I will slay them all, so your heart is mine. Fiona, take your bow out. <laughs> Do not worry. It was merely a jest. Oh. I will not slay your friends. Oh. At least, not today. Huh? In any case, I think we better get going. I hear someone calling me somewhere over there. Away from the crazy person. Yeah. This is all your fault, you know. What did you think was down there anyway? Gold! I don't know. Gold, silver, diamond encrusted chalices. Ooh, the last I mean, one sounds the boy good. In Riverwood told me it was a princess, and the whole bit about the forced betrothal. Wait, he did? But I just assumed he was being a romantic. Well, then you marry her. And yet you believed everything else? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's the bigger fool. You or the three idiots that followed you. Hey, you, you were part of this. So, what was the point in all of this anyway? Well, now we have a potential wife. Not everything in life has a point, Fiona. Like this adventure. It just is. That's what I'm taking away from all of this. Well, I'm glad someone got to take home something. Well, you get the ring. Did one of you just step on a bear trap? I think someone stepped in a bear trap. Oh, what a day. Yes. What an adventure. And everyone got to get to know each other a little bit. Now we're all friends. That's the real treasure.